Ever since the reveal of Halo Infinite in 2018, Halo fans have been eager to learn any bit of information they can about the game. Though it wasn't until July 2020 when we finally had a chance to see the campaign in action, which was received with mixed reviews and ultimately led to the delay of the game. Where soon after the reveal, 343 was rather open with the communication about the game, but then after the announcement of the delay, there were months of silence. This tiny trickle of information over the years has led to the community sentiment that we know nothing about Halo Infinite's campaign, when in reality we know a good amount to understand what to expect for the game. And in this video I want to show you all the gameplay, environment, story, audio, and features that we know of so far spoiler free. So stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. So I'm sure many of you who are watching this video probably feel this way or probably know of people who do feel this way saying that we know nothing about the campaign, we know nothing about the game, we're going in blind essentially, which I would argue against that because we've had months of development updates, so we know playing about the gameplay, what kind of weapons, we know a lot about the environments, the audio, and just all these different kind of details about the campaign and multiplayer of Halo Infinite that we actually know a lot. It just may feel like we don't know a lot because we've had this information dripped to us over the course of years. So what I've done with this video is I accumulated all the information that's out there about the Halo Infinite campaign so that we can have an everything we know about the Halo Infinite's campaign so far. And I'm not gonna be covering any of the spoiler information that's been going around on the internet. If you wanna go find that, go search your favorite dark web website. <laughs> and you'll be able to find it on there. We're only gonna be covering all the information that's been publicly given by 343, either in interviews, blog updates, Ask 343 videos. So I've broken down the information into various buckets. Bucket one is gonna be the gameplay elements. We're talking about weapons and mechanics of the game itself. Environments, what is Zeta Halo gonna be like? What kind of storytelling we can have and what kind of experiences, what to expect when it comes to Halo Infinite. We also talk about the story, spoiler free as well. Only things that they've showcased to the public as a whole, and the whole new audio system that we're gonna have, as well as features that are tied with the campaign as well. So if you guys like these kind of analytical videos, make sure to tap that like button as it really does help out the video and channel. If you wanna stay updated with everything going on with Halo as it ramp up to the release of Halo Infinite, well, make sure you tap subscribe. So let's get right into the content here. So let's first jump into the gameplay of Halo Infinite, the most important part. So the way Halo Infinite is going to play, it's going to be a semi-open world kind of game, taking strong inspirations from missions like Silent Cartographer from Combat Evolved and the mission Halo from Combat Evolved as well, as because of those missions really put a big emphasis on player choice, which seems to be the strong connecting thread between all these different elements of Halo Infinite. And I feel the biggest misconception of Halo Infinite is that people are saying it's an open world game, and it's not exactly that. And 343 developers actually confirmed this in this Destructoid article as well, where it's not exactly an open world game, but something very similar. They talk about it specifically right here in this article saying, when asked whether Halo Infinite takes place in a single continuous open world, Crocker said, the simple answer is that it takes place in a huge world that is open and expansive. We have a storyline that pulls you through it, which is effectively unlocking certain areas, but as you progress through it, you have the ability to backtrack and explore to your heart's content. There is a lot to find out in the world. In which I hear that, it makes me feel like it's much more kind of akin to maybe like an ODST kind of style of missions where, yes, it does have like an open world kind of element to ODST, but you start out small and as you play through the game, it opens up that Mombasa streets where more exploration can be taken place. And I think we're having something very similar to this as well. Though it's not going to be as strict as ODST's campaign access was. In an Ask 343 video, a developer says exactly how you could actually just progress forward if you want to, but you might have some limitations there. You touched on it some in the blog, but how will missions and other objectives be separated from each other in a more connected world? What is stopping me from grabbing a Banshee and flying it to an objective three missions ahead in the story? Um, in a way, the answer is do it. <laughs> you know, go do it. Um, the way that the game is structured and the way that the like 
the primary narrative moves through the game, there's certain things that just naturally by the structure of the game, sort of, you don't have the opportunity to jump ahead and sort of sequence break and, and break the experience. The game embraces this to a, to a degree. The way it's gonna play out is you might be dropped off in a location from the Pelican and there's your primary objective. You can see over the ridge that there's a location that you're gonna be heading to. Um, but then off to the left, there's a, a UNSC forward operating base that's now been overrun by Banished. Oh, do I go down there before I go to the main main story beat or and, and, and take that back? And then maybe I can pull in the vehicle to go use. I can uh, uh, gather up different, you know, my loadout, change out my loadout to what I want to do from the things that I've unlocked. Um, I look over to the right and, oh man, there's some green smoke popped that's, that's coming over that ridge over there. That's probably a, a group of uh, Marines that are uh, heavily bat battling for their lives against banished forces right now. I can go choose to rescue those guys. That would be something to do. And then over there, there's a big Forerunner tower sticking up over that 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 ridge across the across the gap. Maybe I want to go explore that and go see what's going on there. Um, so there's a lot of choice that you get to make about kind of how you want to engage in things and what you want to go do and what stories you want to go uh, pursue at any given time. But then there's always sort of the anchor element of the the core story that's playing through that is ever present and kind of drawing you through the spaces and through the world as it as it un un unfolds in front of you. Gotcha. So a player can't really cut ahead on the, the main Golden Path storyline, They but they can still go around and adventure and explore and find all these other cool things. So you can see how with the way they describe the way the mission structure kind of works within Halo Infinite is that yeah, you do have some freedoms of what you can do in the game, but you really are just going to be kind of running to more, maybe more like mundane kind of side mission kind of stuff. You're not going to be able to like sequence break like they mentioned and do like the main mission that's like three steps ahead. Talking about secondary missions, obviously we have the primary missions which are going to be like your main story beats that will take you through the game. But you also have secondary missions that are going to be part of the campaign as well, which is something brand new to a Halo experience. And 343 has dived a little bit into what these kind of secondary missions will be like. Like we just listened previously about Marines being stuck up on a hill, you can go ahead and go save them or something like that. Uh, there's like caves to explore within Zeta Halo as well, which they've mentioned like Sentinels kind of leading you towards like a path towards a cave. You can go figure out what's going on down there. There are different Forerunner towers you can go explore as well. The big thing for these secondary missions to be something worth doing is that you need to provide some kind of value to the player to give them a reason to do this. Because primary missions have the gratitude of being able to progress the story forward and figure out what happens within the game. But why delay that experience to have these secondary missions? Well, I think that kind of leads into our next bit of information, which is obviously we can hold multiple bits of equipment. This is something that has changed since the delay of Halo Infinite. In the initial gameplay review, we could only hold one at a time, but now with this update, we actually can hold multiple pieces of equipment. Very similar as we can hold multiple grenades, we can do the same with equipment. And I believe running these secondary missions will help give you some more known as upgrades for the equipment as well and also give you some more options with your forward operating bases which are going to be in the game as well. These forward operating bases are looking to be kind of like safe spaces for where you can like fix up your loadout to choose what kind of weapons you want to utilize. You can spawn vehicles as well as take marines with you so which that could provide a service of helping out marines that are stuck on a hill. You can add them to your loadout or squad in a way and so that then it provides a gameplay function and benefit for players to do these secondary missions. And it seems like throughout the world there are going to be these ammo crates as well so you don't have to keep going back to your base to get more ammo. Showcase in the recent August development update where they kind of announced no forge and no co-op, you can keep an eye on the ammo of the sidekick here as he runs up to this pedestal right here as we play it back in slow motion here. Keep an eye right on this, you can see that as you walk up towards this, it automatically refills your ammo as well. So while you're out in the world in these four various Forerunner structures, it looks like you will be able to reload and get more ammo and more resources and not have to go back to your base every single time. Now, here are some rapid fire parts about the gameplay, which I think are super exciting. We have dynamic enemy spawns, which was mentioned in an S343 video. So basically it means like if you're on foot, you'll have more on foot encounters. If you're in a vehicle, you'll come across more anti-vehicle kind of encounters as well. So depending on how you're playing the game is how the enemies will fight you back, which is going to create wholly new experiences 
chances that everybody's gonna be playing Halo Infinite in a different way. Your Spartan does have the abilities of Sprint, Slide, and Clamber, which return back from Halo 5, but does not have boost included with it as well, though it does look to be a bit of equipment, which we'll dive into a little bit. There was no dual wielding with Halo Infinite as well as a whole, which we did get a chance to experience that with the recent flight. Uh, you also will be able to unlock weapon variants very similar to Halo 5. 343 talks about how they were looking to do like an attachment system with Halo Infinite weapons and they found that it just didn't really feel very Halo-like but the community really enjoyed weapon variants that we had back in Halo 5 so we'll see those come back as well. And it does look like you'll be able to upgrade your equipment as you play along in Halo Infinite's campaign as well. Chris Lee talks about this in an IGN article Dane Lee explained that upgrades are items that you'll discover as you explore, which again gives more reason to the secondary missions within the campaign. Rather than some sort of experience-based skill tree or other mechanics that wouldn't make sense for Halo. So again, basically confirms there is no skill tree, it's not like an RPG version of Halo, which I've heard people talk about as well. We do have a light upgrade system for Chief as he explores this ring, he'll be able to upgrade equipment items. But though he does also mention in here that it's not necessarily power upgrades that you'll be receiving with your equipment upgrades, but more just kind of sounds like more gain of function kind of things and allow you to play in a different way. Another gameplay mechanic that's been added to Halo Infinite that's brand new is the doom state for vehicles. Essentially what happens if a vehicle takes enough damage, you'll be hearing this audible beep letting you know like, hey, this vehicle is about to explode. They'll let you know that you need to jump out before you know you, you kick the can a little bit on that one. And also just a really cool thing I thought I was mentioning about the world itself is that you'll be able to knock things off of the edge of Zeta Halo. So yes, you can yeet things besides fusion coils, but you can yeet them into oblivion. Yeet? What's a yeet? Yeet! And we know a long list of weapons and vehicles that are going to be in this game, and everything I'm going to mention here isn't even the full list. For weapons of the UNSC, we have the MA-40 Assault Rifle, the BR-75 Battle Rifle, we have a Machine Gun Turret as well, the Classic Spanker Rocket Launcher, we have a Return of the Hydra, but kind of a different version of it as well. We have the Sidekick, the Bulldog Shotgun, we have the Return of the Sniper Rifle, brand new weapon of the VK-78 Commando, and it's of course with weaponry where for the UNSC, we have frag grenades returning. Now for the Banished, we do know about the Pulse Carbine, the Disruptor, the Mangler, the Needler, Plasma Pistol, the Ravager, the Scrap Cannon, which was mentioned in a cannon fodder update. We haven't had a chance to see that in action yet, but it does sound really awesome. We know about the Shock Rifle, the Skewer, the Stalker Rifle, Energy Sword, Plasma Grenade, Gravity Hammer, Spike Grenade, and also the Electric Shock grenade as well that we saw within the campaign trailer. Though for Forerunner weapons, what we know of is the Heat Wave, the Sentinel Beam as well. I would just have to expect that we'd have more than that. And for the equipment that we know of so far, of the Grapple Shot, Repulsor, Drop Wall, Thruster, as well as the Threat Sensor as well. Now for the UNSC vehicles, we know the Wasp is returning, the Classic Warhawk, a Razorback, Mongoose, as well as the Scorpion. And for the Banished, we know that the Banshee, the Chopper, Ghost, and Wraith are returning in Halo Infinite as well for vehicles. So that's a hefty chunk of information, just the gameplay alone that we know about. But I also want to know about the world that we're going to be playing in, the environments of Zeta Halo. 343 has stated that they're using the Pacific Northwest as like the main biome, which is very similar and influenced from Combat Evolves biomes. So things like high altitude mountain ranges, wetland, swamp kind of regions, they also have a war-torn area known as the Deadlands as well. We have Forerunner cave systems that you can explore inside the ring, as well as banished buildings as well that act as these giant like menacing monoliths throughout the world. The environment of Zeta Halo is going to be multiple times larger than Halo 4 and Halo 5's campaigns combined. And a cool thing about the ring itself is that it's 3D modeled. We've never had a Halo game with a 3D modeled ring. Of course, what does that mean for gameplay or just the experience of Halo? Well, it provides shadowing as well, which it actually they mentioned within development updates that the ring itself can provide like a bit of an eclipse experience while playing the game, giving players a better sense of time of day and things like that as also really interesting stuff. Because traditionally, the ring has always just been part of the skybox nothing really interactive but now the ring of halo 
is finally interactive with the world. The moon's oppressing the sun. He's in the sun's way. Within these environments, we're going to have day-night cycles as well. Uh, there's going to be like not really much in the way of weather effects besides wind and fog, depending on your altitude and time of day you'll be playing. But nothing like rain or snow, thunderstorms, but they may be looking to bring that in the future. But much like how the player choice of how you interact with engagements with weaponry, but the time of day will also affect what kind of enemy types that you'll see within the world. So at night you'll see like patrols of phantoms, sleepy grunts kind of laying around, more coils at night and things like that. Bioluminescent enemies as well. They just talk about how they wanted to kind of bring more visually interesting elements at night compared to you would see during the day. Something that was shown heavily within the 2018 reveal of Halo Infinite was wildlife within the environments as well. So the way wildlife is going to play within Halo Infinite is that it's not going to be very much anything that's really gameplay related, but more kind of like environmentally enhancing kind of things. So you're not going to come across any hostile wildlife like we had those Gutas in Nightfall of Halo Reach. Instead, you'll probably see stuff like we saw with the campaign reveal with like the space gophers walking around. They also mentioned about how like birds can draw attention to certain locations as well. Kind of give a little bit more environmental storytelling, which is going to be really cool to see how 343 can naturally get people's attentions to certain areas rather than just putting like a little waypoint dot on your screen. And talking about environmental storytelling, you probably want to know about the story as well. And I do want to confirm that there will be no spoilers in here. All the information has been provided by 343 or has been confirmed through gameplay. So the setting of the campaign for Halo Infinite is that it takes a couple years after the events of Halo 5. So Cortana has pretty much taken over the galaxy. And Halo Infinite takes place right after the Battle of Zeta Halo, which we saw the Banish, led by Eshram, take over the ring. So what looks to be the story is that you'll fight your way through banished enemies while uncovering mysteries around Cortana and the weapon as well, trying to make your way back home. Though revealed within the 2021 E3 presentation, at some point Cortana is taken in for deletion, but the weapon's programming doesn't complete as someone or something has stopped the removal of Cortana. And we probably won't know what happened until we actually get a chance to play the game. 343 has put a big element on environmental storytelling. Walking into the world, you can kind of get a sense of what's happened within these environments. One way to tell what's happened is through audio logs, which has been confirmed that you can pick up along the way. These audio logs will talk about things like what happened within the area that you're in, maybe some personal stories as well. Before 3 stated that these audio logs complement the environments that you're in to act kind of like a radio drama. This is a heavy callback to Sadie's story during ODST. So if these audio logs can have a coherent story throughout the whole experience of collecting these, well, count me in. We had the confirmation of the weapon during the summer reveal of 2021, where the weapon is designed to take on Cortana. Weapon is also going to act like a new Cortana in a way, as that it was heavily implied during the chip reveal during the Discover Hope trailer, which showcases Cortana's serial number, but just one number higher. And for that Discover Hope trailer, we learned that one of the main characters within the game, Echo 419, aka the pilot, aka Bro Hammer. And an interesting thing is that his name will be revealed throughout the game. Quoting here specifically in this IGN article saying that the pilot's name will be revealed during the course of the campaign. He ended up being named after the actor who plays him, said Crocker. The game's associate creative director, the name is actually his two best friends from childhood. Which now to me begs the question, who does he know? When did he know him? How well does the actor know his friends? Because I definitely want to know the name of the pilot. Who is your daddy and what does he do? During Eshram's speech in the 2020 gameplay reveal, he talks about the Harbinger. Now, we do not know who the Harbinger is. The rumors have it to be Cortana, though we won't fully know probably until we actually get to play the game. Obviously, we can tell that the Bash have taken over Zeta Halo after the big epic battle where Ashram is the main villain, though he looks to have a crew of high-ranking banished members as well that have been revealed like Hyperius, Tovaris, Jagger Rodumni, and presumably others as we're showcased in this tag map right here, showcasing another like high-value target enemy to take down, which I feel are going to be kind of common missions you'll need to be coming across while playing Halo Infinite. And though the Banish are basically kind of like the Covenant 2.0 in a way, as it has a big conglomerate of various different species that were previously part of the Covenant as well, things like the Elites, Grunts, Jackals, you know, Sentinels, Brutes, Hunters, and very much more. 
Though there have definitely been some subtle changes to some of these enemy types, some new enemy types within these groups, and different behaviors as well. A new grunt enemy type has been revealed and it's been referred to as the grunt mule, which if we kind of zoom in here and look to the lower right, we see a grunt with looking like holding like a, some kind of backpack in a way, but we've seen in various toy reveals that these grunt mules will be able to hold weapons, they'll be able to hold grenades and different various bits of armament for the enemies to utilize against you. And talking about how some enemy types have earned new behaviors, Joseph Stain talks about this specific encounter with hunters Talking about your traditional moves that you make with hunters, talking about the bait him, get him the charge, then step aside, pivot, and direct fire into their exposed backsides. But Staten says here specifically saying, as expected, one of the hunters charge exposed his weak spot by the time I pivoted to face it, however, it already pivoted to face me. So some of your classic techniques to take on enemies may not be something that could be very useful within the gameplay of Halo Infinite. And he talks about within that quote saying how he utilized the sandbox of Halo Infinite to overcome his new challenge of taking on a familiar foe. Now gameplay is what makes it fun. The environment and visuals will give you the sense of place, but the audio is where you get the real immersion. And 343 is looking to really step up the audio of Halo Infinite. We already experienced this with the recent flight and my God, the music is amazing. Oh, listen to those drums, boys. Oh, vibe, vibe with me, chat. Oh, this is so good. Dude, listen to this. This sounds so good. So talking about that music, there's actually gonna be some more gameplay elements tied to it as there's gonna be a dynamic music system as well, which is gonna be crucial for the dynamic and openness of Halo Infinite's gameplay. 343 provides examples saying exploring will have one type of music, then as you transition into a battle, the music changes along with it as well. Though they did say as well that if you went straight into battle, you might get something completely different as well. So you're not gonna be getting the same like battle music every single time like you hear like in Skyrim or something like that. The music is all based on where you're at, what you're doing, and also what part of the story that you're in as well. A brand new feature to the audio is the threat priority system. Essentially what this does is that whatever is gonna be the most threatening thing in the game for you is gonna be the loudest thing in the mix of the general audio within the game. And it's all depending on factors like distance, weapons, where the enemies are looking, mentioning how the friendly audio is actually gonna be a little bit lower in the mix as well. So then those enemy audio bits can be a little bit more noticeable, providing more functionality to the audio of the game. Now the audio file in me gets really excited about this news as well as they talk about the new kind of portal audio system that they have involved with Halo Infinite. Right here, this diagram does a great job of showcasing the audio source right here, where if you're the listener down here, you'll hear a bit more of like a muffled kind of through the wall kind of tone. And then as you progress to an opening, you might hear the audio kind of come from this direction, which would be much more natural to the human ear. So room audio is gonna be playing a huge factor to give you that immersion to let you kind of get the sense of where you are, which this does sound very mundane, but what this really does is help give you a better sense of the environment and that you're playing in as well. How does this metallic audio kind of reverberate through the environment? How do these trees kind of dampen the audio and things like that? Really interesting stuff. It really helps your immersion within the game as well. Help make you feel like you're on Zeta Halo rather than just being there. And the last two bits I have for you guys are the cinematics and features along with the campaign of Halo Infinite. One thing they mentioned is that this can be a non-traditional style cutscenes within Halo Infinite. It's all gonna be done within the engine of Halo Infinite and there's gonna be smooth transitions all done in one take. So things like time of day and also what weapons you're holding will take effect within the cutscenes scenes as well. Now features, I know the big news you guys are really sad about, myself included, is that there will be no co-op at the launch of Halo Infinite. Though it's currently planned for season two, which is roughly three months after launch in early 2022. Though we do have some more specifics on how that co-op will work once it's actually brought into the game. Jerry Hook, who's the head of design, saying, hey everyone, I saw some reports of campaign supporting four player 
are split screen for campaign and just want to correct. Halo Infinite will be supporting two player split screen and four player online co-op for the campaign. Sorry about the confusion. So that's just another bit of information that I think a lot of people might have missed out on when it comes to what the campaign is going to be offering us as well. Also keep in mind another feature which is going to be huge for your controller players, you're going to have fully remappable controllers, much like you have for mouse and keyboard which is pretty standard. You'll be able to do that within the campaign of Halo Infinite, which I'm sure many of us got to experience the remapping of the controller during the flight that we had recently. So this was a long video, but there's actually a lot of things that we know about the campaign of Halo Infinite so far, and we still don't know everything. So hopefully after the end of watching this video, you kind of get a little bit of understanding about what we have for Halo Infinite's campaign. If you guys are new to the channel or missing any content from me recently, check out the playlist right here. I got all my Halo news informational videos that I upload daily about. So thank you so much for watching and great. Really appreciate it. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.